Like Welcome oh back. This Shout is the Christina Payne show. I am Christina Payne. Hey. Chrissy Payne. Um, to my right is Troy Webb. Troy W E double B. To my left is Rallo Boykin. It's Christina Payne show. <laughs> See, that's always I can't do that oh, shit. Oh God. I love you guys, man. Um, but hey. This is the Christina Payne Show, and we are having Chucky Thompson up next. That was one of the songs that he's done, um, Mesmerized by Faith Evans, and we got some more music coming up, too. Um, and right now, we have Mr. Thompson on the line with us. Mr. Cool. Thompson, are you there? Mr. Thompson, are you there? Chucky. Hey. Chucky, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, what's yeah. up, man? What's happening? How are you? I'm I'm fine. I'm on the road, so I hope that we don't awesome. get cut off in between, but let's just hope for the best. How's Look, we hoping going? for the greatest. Yeah. Thank you so what's much up, for bro? even calling in and taking time out your busy <laughs> schedule to come in and, you know, I, I'm, I know you couldn't make it in, so thank you for calling in, you know? Yeah, You are such it's a professional. Yeah. But um, you know, if you don't know Chucky Thompson, you if, if, are you talking to me? Yeah, I, I mean I couldn't hear you, but go ahead, I can hear you now. Okay. Now to our listeners all over the world, if you have no idea who Chucky Thompson is, die. Damn. Okay. Damn. Damn. Slow death. Slow death. Real slow. Damn. Like drink some alcohol. Like, and just keep drinking. Jumping some quicksand. Exactly. <laughs> um, because this brother has been around in the game for a little, oh, I'm not going to date him, but he's been around since Bad Boy, those when Diddy was puffy. Dang. Okay? Now, this brother has worked on everybody and everything. And he's won Grammys. He's been in magazines. He's worked with, Everybody from Faith Evans to Jennifer Lopez to Chuck Brown, our one and only Chuck Brown. He's a D.C. native, started yeah. playing in church. I love his mama yeah, and his whole family and his kids and everybody. And um, shout out to his uh, father who passed away as well, Mr. Thompson, because um, we loved him as well. And um, I just want to give a shout out to you, Chuggy, for just being a solid dude, like amongst you know, all your accolades and everything. Like, I love it when people's private lives match up with the outer stuff. So thank you for being a solid dude and just always being a real dude and um, and always giving great advice and being a gentleman and, you know, being a man of valor and being a father, raising your kids and your kids love you too and, and all of that. <laughs> So man, all of that, all of that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I about to say, look, oh, like, I'm really like, whoa. Yeah, yeah I about to say, this, Chucky Thompson is a humanitarian. He didn't, he didn't save right. a couple kids from drowning. He has, he has, and then he's got Grammys for that My Life album with Mary J. Blige. My God, um, I mean, there's so there's so much. He did the whole entire album. That album is a classic. Well, I ain't gonna tell him all the chicks I didn't been with to that album, man. <laughs> Have mercy. <laughs> My Please. life. Man, it's, cra it's crazy with that particular album that, you know, I'm, I'll am i run into uh, certain females and they'll be like, oh, my God, that album helped me through college. Like, that yeah. album really affected them in a way that it just it became a part of their lives. But for me, to be honest, I mean, it was just work. <laughs> it's just like you guys are at the station right now. I know you do 100 million episodes and, you know, some one of those episodes just may trust somebody, and I mean, you were just at work, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's, it's amazing to, to still survive with what that record did, you know, outside of the experience that I had making it. Mm -hmm. So you know, did you yeah, ever I like I didn't? I'm saying that puff that. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. Um, now I know that you know you started in church that Mama Thompson had you in the kitchen washing dishes and cooking with her and you were beating on pans and everything when you did start making music did you ever think like I'm doing this I'm gonna win a Grammy Grammys nominations the whole nine like was that your ultimate goal or like what made you get into it well I mean I can equate it to you know 
sometimes you'll catch somebody in the house dancing in their underwear. You know what I'm saying? And they know at some point they're going to be a star. You know what I'm saying? In the mirror, so they always take the stage. So me coming up playing instruments, you know, somewhere in there I wanted to be a musician first. I never even understood what musical production was. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, Teddy Riley was a big inspiration to me, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and Molly Maul was a big inspiration. Mm-hmm. So when music started to change, it started to get younger. And that's when I started to say, okay, you know what? A, product, a producer basically organizes the musicians. So if I have all of these different instruments that I play, it's just to organize them, you know? And I'm thinking like this, I'm maybe 16 years old. You know, but at that time, it was just, it was just the music was evolving. Everything was changing, you know? Mm-hmm. Starting to get younger. So that kind of pushed me out there. So, and at some point, by seeing it being younger, I felt like, you know, I could probably have a chance to be. Mm. You know, to be how, um, how did you start playing with the Godfather Go Go Chuck Brown? How did that come to be? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say being here in D.C., I actually knew about Rasmus before I knew about Chuck Brown. Because I mean, that was my age group was the group called Rasmus, and you know. Once I found out, you know, when, when when people started going to see Chuck, it was a different thing. It was like, okay, we're going to get dressed up. We, you know, it was a different vibe to go see Chuck, a different respect. So when I saw him and I saw the, you know, because I played trombone, I was playing in the in jazz bands and concert bands and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. to listen to what Chuck was doing musically with Gogo, like he was, he was taking it to more of a, uh, you know, jazzier scene. Like it was an older mm-hmm. jazzy vibe. Mm-hmm. And to hear that match with that, with the, it blew my brain. <laughs> my brain was gone. Mm. So from there, I was on a mission just to get next to him. And it just wound up, Chuck, you know, he's, he's, he's a real open hearted person, especially when it comes to youth and it comes to somebody that's interested in music. So with that being a platform, it was kind of easy. You know, I just talked to him. Mm. And um, this is when I was 16. I did a record for him when I was 16. 16? That was the first thing I did with him. Yeah, because wow. I started producing. <clears throat> Damn. And, uh, and, and, and I did this one record with him. It was a preachy record. I, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to throw myself out there. I wrote a rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was for a song called Babies Have a Baby. Baby and Got a Baby. He wasn't going to do it at first because he doesn't really like preachy records. He said the preachy records on sale. Wait, wait, wait. Like, you said, what was the name of the title? I understand. Huh? What was the name of the title? It was called Babies Having Babies. You oh, may find it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's dope. But that was, you know, that was like late 80s that that happened. And then I wound up, his Congo player left, and I wound up auditioning for him. Oh, wow. And then I played in the band. I, I'm on the, uh, if you ever catch, I don't put myself all the way out there. If you ever catch that Go-Go Live at the Capitol Center video, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the Congo player for Chuck. What? Yeah. <laughs> so I plugged Dougie Fresh out with that one. He's he, he meeting Chucky Thompson, and then he remember that show. He's like, oh, oh, my you? God. Man, that is crazy. Hey, Chuck, hey Chucky, what, what's so up? I got my stars early, you know what I'm saying? Gogo was a big help for me mm. to be able to get on, you know, have a platform where people were actually there, you know, and, and actually doing different music, you know, mm-hmm. a whole nother vibe. Mm-hmm. what was on the radio and what was happening anywhere else. I grew up with that, so it's a part it's a part of my for it's almost like my secret weapon. Right. You know. How do you great. how do you feel um Go Go has changed since you were fifteen, sixteen till now? Um I'll just put it to you like this. Before it was more of a top forty thing. So that's why you'll have a lot of go go groups playing other people's songs. You know, always say that like, why do you have to play everybody's song? Because it started out here, either you hired a DJ for your cabaret or you hired a band, oh. you know, and Chuck basically was the person that, you know, they came with the crossfader. Like, first you could play a record, you had to take it off, put another one on. When they came with the crossfader, that started taking business away from Chuck because he had to play a song, he stopped, he had to warn people back up again. Mm-hmm. But he got smart and said, you know what, what I'll do is I'll put a percussion break in between the songs. That way I could keep people on the dance floor along. Oh, wow. With songs happening, and then 
he would do those percussion breaks and then do like an answer, call and response with the audience. You know, you tired yet? You know, just kind of talking to them and things. And then that part started being, a, you know, the part that they wanted to hear. Then you got younger bands coming up. So what I was feeling is the difference is the younger bands focused more on the beat and not mm. so much the song. Right. But the way I see Gogo, I see it, I see it as a genre, right? You can do any record. I can do a record for Tina Turner. I can do a Gogo record. It's, but what it is is, and it, it's a song. You know, if, if the song is a smash, mm-hmm. then it'll be a smash. A quick question: Do you right. read music? I read music for trombone. I don't, everything else is by ear. Okay, because that—that's what I was wondering. Because in your ability to hear. Um, you said with you, everybody listens, but when I listen, my mind is on my record. Mind on record. <laughs> on record. Okay. So yeah. explain that. I remember, like, I can sit and hear something once, and I'll sit and figure out what's happening with it, and then I'll just remember it, and I can go to the keyboard and play it. Mm. Like, I hear the notes, I hear each note in it, and then I'll remember. I, in some kind of way, I take a picture, it becomes a picture. Wow, <laughs> that is dope. You know, saying we play the picture. How many instruments do you play? Um, well, I started on the drums, then I learned guitar, mm-hmm. and then I learned bass. But see, it's different types of guitar and different types of bass. So I want to play on the upright bass, and I want to play on electric guitar, acoustic guitar. Wow. And, and then the keyboards is the same thing. I play piano, but I play organ, I play synthesizer. What's your favorite? Um, I play them all about the same. I love all of them about the same. I, I, I've i never been able to get past one. Because you know each instrument is a personality. So which real, instrument real, yeah. <laughs> do you connect with the most? I would probably say the guitar. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's more of a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Why so? Well, I played guitar before I played piano. So... I was playing the guitar, and then I looked at the piano, and I said, wait a minute, man. Because it's hard to kind of, you know, get your finger. At first, I play a, I play a right-hand guitar upside down, so I'm already backwards, coming in the gate. And mm. and so trying to play different chords is, 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 a, is a challenge, but the chords that I play is, is so crazy that a regular person, is, is, his brain is gone. Because <laughs> mm. it's upside down. So... Me looking at a piano was easier. I was like, okay, so if this is just me putting my hands on these keys and they play the notes, I'm telling myself at like the age of six, like, it's a rap. <laughs> if, I can, if I can do this, if that's what this is, it's a rap. I just looked at the keyboard and looked at that and figured it out. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's good. That's a gift. That is serious. Yeah, but I used God to think given. that anybody could do that. <laughs> that is so I used so to get funny. mad at people because they, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Now, um, now back back in the eighties and nineties, when you started sending your music to Puffy, um, what um, were, were were these like cassette tapes or like how were you sending Puffy music? Yeah, it was cassettes back then. Oh <laughs> damn it! it yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a real demo. That was a real demo. <laughs> Good wow. lord! I had something like stupid. I think I had like a hundred songs. Oh my God! But all oh, but this is the thing. Out of a hundred songs, he only picked maybe like twenty. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And that was, but it was like you know you. I would tell anybody. You know what I'm saying? If you're a writer, write a song a day. Mm. Write a song write a day. Two songs a day you can write Hashtag. One, you know what I'm saying? Write, write a, one song song a, day. a day. At the end of the year, because that's Neo. Neo went to Death Jam with like five hundred songs, but oh he writes God. a song a day. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That is incredible. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, it, it pushes you a lot of different ways. Yeah, because... You know what's crazy? I'm going to tell you something crazy. Motown, when they had those funk brothers, mm-hmm. they used to do three-hour sessions. I, I remember this off of that, that DVD. They did three-hour sessions. They would do four songs in three hours. Wow. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's crazy. But that's how you... That's, kind of the way you need to But work. I love how back in the days it was all quality too. Like nowadays kids are making music and then it's just like nah, 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 nah. But I think it's I'm getting like, back ah. to that. You know what I'm saying? I, I have a lot of uh, different ways of looking at situations and mm-hmm. I look at it like that. You know, <clears throat> it's a 
a person that's been eating McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? They eat a real meal. Right. I be too much for them. Home cooking and microwave food, totally different. Yeah, because they're used to that fast, mm-hmm. you know. But I think it's going back to that, though. I think that it's been, it's been so much with this new technology and, and all of this and that, that people are looking for something new. Like, mm. a lot of the kids that I deal with, like, I deal with a lot of young producers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, they just be turned up on where they are right now. Like, I'm right here. This is why I, I'm, I'm hot right now. I'm, I'm making beats in four seconds. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I don't want to hear no old music. Like, they don't want to hear nothing. Right. And still, they do a little bit of hot run out. You know what I'm saying? And they see me picking up instruments, and I'm going crazy. Like, I'm, right. I, I'm super outlasting them. <laughs> and they're looking at me like I'm nuts. And right. I'm like, yeah, I am nuts. <laughs> because yeah. you're nuts. Because you're younger than me. You're supposed to be ten times crazier than me. But yeah. you're stuck on this little window that you have right here. Which is cool. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, to have, the more uh, uh, ammunition you got, you know what I'm saying, the longer you can stay in the field. <laughs> you only got a box of bullets, yo. You short. Okay. Yeah. If you're just if you're just tuning in with us right now, we have the one and the only Chucky Thompson, super producer, on the Christina Payne show with us right now. And if you don't know who he is, you're nuts. Um, but he's worked with everybody from Mariah Carey to Carl Thomas, uh, Angie Stone, who we just had on the show, Buster Rhymes, um, Leela James, Craig Mack. A new edition, color me bad. Um, the list just goes on and on. So for real, like psh, my Brian McKnight, everybody. Good lord. Um, Emily King also was just in town, and I remember when you were working on her album, and um, you you did her whole album for for that um, initial. Her. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to do we, I mean, we, we sat down with a lot of different producers and different things and just the records that we were making because we were together so long. Mm-hmm. You know, how we how was it working with um, a Caucasian slash white, you know, person who was trying to do jazz or soul or, you know? Right. How was that? I mean, it really was my answer to young music. I mean, it's not like saying that young music is this and that. Mm-hmm. She, you know, she plays guitar. You know, she's from that. Lower East Side of uh, New York, so it's like her vibe and just you know, just her as a person was, you know, what I'm saying I just felt like she was a lot more than what I felt people were giving credit to the youth being. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I wanted to present her to say, look, you know, what I'm saying there's still heat out here. There's still people that get it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with your career spanning decades and all these accolades and millions of albums sold and Grammys won and more nominations and all of that, um, I'm reading that you feel like you're just getting started. Explain that. Yeah, I am. <laughs> just saying, like, you know, a lot has happened from even before I got to Bad Boy. You know, a lot has happened with the introduction just being a musician and and all of those things, you know, I still feel like the space for things that haven't happened yet, you know, it's just, you know, it, it, it has to line up with the right people. And sometimes it doesn't happen right away. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I have a vision to see it done. So I'm, I'm nothing that I've done for fun. You know, I mean, I have to take away from the things I've done. I think you know, those things have helped me get to this point where I could do or see what I'm trying to see. Mm-hmm. happen and that's pretty much where I'm at I'm just <laughs> I'm on a grind right now you know mm. and it's to you know I put it to like this Clive Davis is over 70 years old okay and he's that gay now is on the block yeah, so don't get it and he's sucking he's on the block he <laughs> understands the sorry. business you know? sorry he understands the, more than more than his era or any of that it's just the business of music and where it's going and if you don't understand that part of it, if you can have a hit record that was maybe a hit two, three years ago, mm-hmm. and wonder why it's not a hit now. Right. You follow, you know what I'm saying, pay attention to the business to know what people are, you know. Mm-hmm. And I look at, you know, uh, empires like Motown. 
Mm-hmm. And I see where Barry's brain was to, to create a company like that, with just a vision for how to come like that. It was always about the people. Mm-hmm. You know, it was always about what was on the minds of people. If you release a record like what's going on at the time it was released, I mean, that was totally different for what, you know, what Motown was standing for. Right. But here's the minds of people. Things are happening right in front of them. You can't ignore it. Write about it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that type of record to hit the street. I mean, it's still a classic to this day. Right. There's going to be a classic. Man, everything you worked on is a classic. On some realness, like if we really like run down like all of these songs and everything, like, oh yeah. my God, what would my life be like without Big Papa? What would my life be like without Toto? Can't you see? I re- That was in the eighth grade when that came out. I remember, like, that yeah. was my slap. Yeah. Like, can't you it's see what? Thing like this is, we were just young. Like, we were all young, and we were all just fans of our culture. You know what I'm saying? Right. From fuck, like, this. And well, even we, Nas, we, like, you worked with Nas on one mic. Like, like yeah. all I need is one mic. Yeah. Good <laughs> Jesus. You better yeah. need one mic. That's all I'm going to say. But, yeah, um, Nas, man, you know. <laughs> but um, who talent. is... If, you, if you're in the room with talent, you're going to create something crazy. That is true. You know, that is it. very true. And then this guy is in tune with his talent. So if one thing is to have talent, and the next thing is to have somebody that's in tune with the talent. Right. You know what I mean? That's real. He right there with it. So it was easy. Like, if people think... That record to me is crazy. Uh, with Rent, though... <laughs> <laughs> it was just work, like, but, but the work with him, you know, it's an effective time. Like, even though we may have how many hours booked, eight hours booked, studio time. Mm-hmm. You got me and him in eight hours. You better have something crazy, right? Okay. So it was like you know, we we understood where hip hop was going. We understood where his life was at at the time because he was dealing with all that stuff with him and Jay Z was going on. Mm-hmm. So in my brain, I'm like, look, man, we got to get past that. That's all that's going to go go past, you mm-hmm. know. It's going to go past. So then, what? Where we? What do you have after that? Right. What's going to make that <laughs> statement for you after that? That is very true. All about that. Um, <laughs> man, he had an idea for. He's a, he he gets into this creative thing where basically he wanted to have a hook that was quiet, and the verses would get loud. So that was the premise mm. of One Mic. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, then the blanks. And the first record that came to mind to do something like that was like in the air tonight. Was when the, the verses was chill. You know, and then it just turned up. So that's why I wanted the verses to do for One Mic. So if you look at the sound in relation to the same song you hear in the air tonight go up. Hmm. That's oh. right around the time One Mic goes up. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What so, tell me about um what you're doing? Is it Daoud Baptiste? How do you say his name? Yeah, Daoud Baptiste. Yeah, what are you guys all doing together? I'm seeing new projects and things like that. Well, we we started a couple of things, you know. Um, we started a couple of things, and we're kind of wrapping those things up now. Mm-hmm. But Daoud is, you know, he's off. He's one of the up and coming execs coming up right now. So I, I didn't want to stifle him. You know what I'm saying? So we're working on a couple of different things that he's doing. He's doing some things separately. I'm doing some things separately. Okay. But, so it's just, yeah, it's just different business that's happening. So the new record label with production, production, artist management, all of that, is that one of the things that, that you're working with him or is that by yourself? Yeah, he's pretty much taking that side. You know, oh, I'm still on production in okay. the Chuck Thompson movement. So okay. there's a okay. whole lot that's happened on you know, in this on this side right here, I'm actually getting ready to head to LA for a couple of months. I haven't really Dang, been out a yet. couple of months. Yeah, just a couple of months. Mm. You know, I guess I'll come visit. Might be longer. It should be longer. But <laughs> we're gonna try a couple of months first. Okay. <laughs> so, film and That's television the in the year. future, huh? Say so again, I can So, film and television in the future. Oh, most definitely. I, I mean. One of the people that I'm working with right now is Faith Evans. I mean, I think that her and Nikki did well with this uh, R&B Divas thing that they got going on. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just played know. Mesmerized by Faith Evans, the one that you did. 
And he's also worked with Usher, Born Americans. We had um, Edley Shine on our show um, recently, too. And he gave you a shout out. Um, but yeah, thank you, Chucky. Thank you so much. Can you let people know like how they can um, stay in touch touch with you, or oh, if they yeah. needed to they hire can, you or book you or anything? Up on Twitter. Uh huh. I'm on that at Chuck Life 365. Mm-hmm. Definitely hit me there. I'm on Facebook. Just check in, you know. Okay. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> There it is. Okay. There you go. Thank you so much, Chuck. Appreciate you, man. Chucky Thompson yes, here indeed. with yeah, us live. Talk too much. No, huh? you're good. I, here to be I, I always love talking to you, and it's always awesome to hear from you. You always have great things to say, and um, you're so well informed, and you use both sides of your brain, which I like. I, I like you as a person. Forget whatever else you do. I like you. You know what I'm saying? Well, I appreciate that, man. And I like you guys, man. Much Thank success you. to y'all. Hey, and appreciate y'all it, man. Thank you. Hey, give us you a know. quick um drop real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Can I call back for that? <laughs> this is where I can call back for that to do it the right way. I'll come up there. How about that? Let okay, me do it the yeah, right we'll way. do that. We'll do that. All right? Okay, I we'll love you. We'll do it like that. All right, family. Well, y'all be safe. Okay. And, All right, bro. Uh, you know, have a great show. Yes, and I'll see you later. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. Thank you. Love you. Bye. If you are just tuning in, you just missed Chucky Thompson, the one, the only producer extraordinaire. He used to be on Bad Boy, had a multi-million dollar contract with Bad Boy, producing all types of tracks, all types of songs that we know and grew up with, classics and all of that, as we go to one right now. When you first heard this song, where was you at? Was you at a house party? Was it summertime? Or was you in your car? Or was you watching BET video soul like me? Donnie Simpson was on still. (laughs) This is Big Papa, Notorious B.I.G. WLVS Radio. We'll be right back. To all the ladies in the place with style and grace, allow me to lace these lyrical dishes in your bushes. Uh.